Hey guys, Joe Bozing here with uh, Chasing Giants. I, uh, I wanted to take a few minutes here just to go through um, kind of the, the whys um, to hunting each season. Whether it's the days, the weather, what have you. So I'm gonna break it down into early season. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do early season in two formats. Um, I'm a data guy. I know I've heard Terry uh, Pierce say that on the on the Chasing Giants podcast, but uh, I'm a data guy like him. So I collect a lot of data on whether deer move in daylight, or in this case, I'm gonna use harvest dates. So like I said, I'm gonna break early season down into two sections. I'm gonna call it September and October. I know not every state opens in September, but I'm gonna give you some of the data to early and late season. And then November, I'm gonna use just date specific because we know what November brings. But early season in Kentucky, being able to hunt in September, I've noticed one um, data point that I don't hear talked about a lot, um, and that's humidity. So in the past, I've got, uh, all, I've got all my harvest since 2012, which was 12. In September, I killed this pat or this year on September 8th, and then in 2018 and 2021, I actually killed um, both on September 22nd. What was unique about those days is they all had a significantly lower humidity percentage than the average. Uh, I've noticed that, and if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense, right? Because um, those deer, it's it's the hotter, hotter part of the year. They're moving from their bed to food in general. They don't have to, you know, they, they don't have to go far, but they can go at night when it's more comfortable. So I've noticed that humidity um, being a huge factor. Okay, well, let's move into October. So I've killed, and all these deer since 2012 have been, you know, good mature deer that just don't move um, every day in daylight. So I'm, I'm giving you the factors that I think made them get up and move. So in October, I killed on 10, 10, 10, 12, and 10, 17. So 10, 10, 13, sorry, 10, 12, 20, and 10, 17, 19. This is pretty obvious. All those came with a good cold front. Two out of three of those were on food plots. One was in an oak flat. So cold front, and then you hear this a lot, so I'm not breaking ground here, but high barometric pressure, right? Okay, now I'm gonna, the, to me, you know, those October, it's, it's, it's cold fronts, it's food, it's high barometric pressure. I don't have, I mean, I have some data for November, but it's kind of back and forth. I killed on 11, 1, 15, 11, 7, 12, 11, 10, 22, and 11, 12, 23. So for me there, I'm going to focus a little bit more on dates. You know, all, all of us have full-time jobs. We can't just go out every day we want. And I've killed more deer in the past, you know, when I was more uh, learning to hunt and stuff like that. I didn't put those in there because not everyone was a five plus year old deer. But what I have started to notice in the past few years is obviously everybody talks about that seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth area. I've actually had in the last few years some really good hunts pushing up into the peak and actually at the peak. Um, like last year, um, you just do, you do have to put more time in. And then lastly, I shot a mature deer on 12, 23, 14. That was an interesting one because it had been really cold. The temperature raised back up to about 35 that day, which was still below average, but it had been really cold. And I killed that deer on a green plot. So I think that's something to think about in late season is if you've had a really cold snap and you don't have you know a bean plot or a corn plot um, maybe you wait for the first day um, where the temperature rises back up a little bit and gets on a green plot but anyways i thought you guys might find that interesting um, come back here and find more videos like this on the strategy on chasing giants and we'll see you guys in the woods